the dear Swami and friends. It's really a great occasion for me also to join the Golden Jubilee celebrations of this great center. I remember Swami Satprakash Samadhi when I was in India in 1935. By chance, I was there in Delhi. We were observing the birthday of Swami Vivekananda on 27th of January 1935. And I just visited that place. And Swami just finished the center, not completely, a little bit left. We were not allowed to enter into the premises according to the rules of the uh, New Delhi Corporation. Therefore, he was staying outside, but they observed the birthday in the center. For the first time he, for me to see a celebration in a mort, uh, ashrama, Vivekananda's birthday, well, I used to visit Delhi quite often. I had a good fortune of, fortune of meeting Swami and talk to him. Well, suddenly I came to know that he was to come back, come to this country in 1936. And that too to Providence. Later on, I came in 54. Many of our friends in tell me in Providence how nice the Swami was. Mr. and Mrs. Pulney asked me to convey to you, all of you their gratitude and their greetings to all of you because they know him very well. And Swami came here and started in 1938. It's a great opportunity for us to observe this Golden Jubilee. And Swami, I thank him for inviting me to come and speak here. Well, Swami Vivekananda's contribution, when you study very carefully, it has two dimensions. One, from the point of our own country, India. As I evaluate it, I discover that his contribution there is a little bit different. It is from the point of national and social consciousness he has contributed to the whole subcontinent of India. But when it comes to his contribution here, it is not only special, it is unique, I call it. Why? Here, it is quite different what is talked in India. Here, mostly, through America, through the whole world, he presented a kind of what is called universal religion and spiritual philosophy. For the first time, a religion was presented as science, not as a creed or a dogma or a sect. That is, I call it a unique and special contribution of Vivekananda to America and to, through America to the whole world. First, before he came here, he was not aware what, where he was going, what he was going to do. The boys that sent him here were also not aware. They thought he was a good man, fit person to represent Hinduism. They sent him here. Well, he took the ticket and got into the boat and arrived here. That is not enough. When he came to Chicago, he discovered he was just like any other person coming and crossing the ocean. He has no credit, he had no credentials, and he was not representing any particular group. A stray individual. He was a little disappointed. Almost wanted to go back to India. And that too, when he was in Chicago, he could not match his purse with the charges there. Somebody suggested to him to go to Boston and stay there. Just Boston, they got this small fishing village. Therefore, he could manage 
in an expensive way. Well, he came to Boston, that also God's grace. He met a lady who took him as a curio from India and then showing to everybody the big turban, a nice gentleman. By chance, she took him to Professor John Henry Wright. And he had a, Swami had a long talk with him about his purpose of his coming, his helplessness, lack of credentials. John Wright said, Swami, asking you for credentials, it's just asking son his right to shine on this planet. You don't need any credentials. He wrote a nice letter to the committee there or in charge of the delegates. Here is a man who is more learned than all the learned professors put together, he said. That is, that Professor Wright discovered Swamiji. Rather, America discovered Swamiji through Professor Wright. That is not enough. Swami also had to discover America. Is a two-way traffic. And that too, very quickly, Swami observed the American situation, American trend, particular Americans. Long before he went to speak in Chicago, he spoke some places in Boston area in a church also, Anscon church, and uh, small groups. Very yes, quickly, he felt the pulse. He came to Chicago. As usual, he was a little bit uh, not prepared to face that big crowd of not audience, the speakers from all parts of the world, representing all religions. And the way they presented their creeds or dogmas, he heard them all. Even though he was asked to speak, now and then he refused. Some people thought he was not going to speak at all. Well, he waited for an opportunity. When he heard them all, he got up to speak. Well, anybody who comes from any part of the world trying to represent his or her religion, let will come out and say all these things. No. He did not start like that. He wanted to open the minds, both of all, the audience and the leaders of religions that came. Before he wanted to say something about his own, idea or concept of religion. What they wanted is opening of their hearts and minds. He gave a very simple story. When I first read this story nearly 60 years back, I was thrilled. The story is nothing but a little frog in a little well. The sum and substance of the story is we are all here addressing these leaders of the religions in our own little wells as little frogs and we think the world is just our well. That was a big shock to many of them. Eye opener. And then he started speaking about next time his own theme of his religion. Well, even though he started with a nice background of Hinduism, he did not start Hinduism as one of the religions that was under shock to many of them. He stood up and said, Hinduism is the mother of all religions. Just imagine to stand up and say that he represents a religion which is mother of all religions. I remember once I was giving a talk 
And I quoted these two interfaith, interfaith conference. A Catholic father stood up and said, Swami, we don't accept it. I knew it long back, I told him. <laughs> because a child may deny the mother, but the mother never denies the child. There is a saying in Sanskrit, Kuputrova jayet, kvachita vi kumata anabhavati. There may be a spoiled child, but not a spoiled mother. <laughs> you may deny me, but I don't deny you. I accept you, I told him. That's what we were taught by Sri Ramakrishna and Vivekananda and the Holy Mother. It's too much for many people to swallow it, but he proved it. That Hinduism, that Vedanta, which he represented, was not a religion. It is the religion. Because it does not isolate itself or herself from the rest of the religions of the world. That Hinduism he beautifully presented and said Hinduism stands for what is called universality. It stands for what is called it represents try to present the all-inclusiveness of the spiritual thought. It's very difficult to swallow this, but it's true. Hinduism is not based on any particular one book or one person. So many saints and sages inspired, contributed, discovered spiritual values and spiritual truths. All those things or before other for the last five thousand years has one pack, single packet called Hinduism or Vedanta. And those sages and saints, Vivekananda said, that discoverers of the spiritual laws, they are eternal. And that presentation has helped many people just to have an idea what he is going to say. I just read a passage from his observation from the point of, you know, this what's called harmony and unity of religions. Because while presenting the spiritual thought, there are four aspects that are in it. As presented by Swamiji, a special contribution. First is Unit and harmony of all religions. And second, religion is scientific. <laughs> and the third, man or woman is not a sinner. They are all divine. The divine spark is in every soul. And the fourth is the, the discipline that helps us to realize the divine spark, to become aware of the divine spark, that the four contributions, they are all impersonal and universal. You can learn from any saint, any sage, from any scripture, but someone's substance is spiritual philosophy, which is very practical. And this, he understood the need because he studied the entire American situation. What is America today? He was said then, even today also the same. Actually, we are not Americans, I tell you, honestly speaking. We may get the citizenship. Real Americans are there in the... Those are called reservations. Isolated from the rest of the world. Just like a museum. They are kept there, we will take them now and then, people, to show them. They are real Americans. We are all foreigners. We have come at different times and we are real here. And we claim ourselves as Americans. We made a constitution and we follow it. True Americans are there. That means 
we are all here from all parts of the world we brought here our own cultures our uh, our civilization our religions our skills put together all these things is at america that is world in one place actually you got all religions here i remember two years back we had a conference of what's called you know, world religions not big conference it's what's called representatives as professors were invited believe me there are 29 different major religions all from outside from europe from asia from africa far east what i mean to say is all religions are here all cultures are here in that situation what you were supposed to do whereas in parliament everybody try to beat his own drum that doesn't work a new setup here american setup and he understood thoroughly well what america was at that time that's what i call vivek and that discovered america that's most important because before many people come is the habit is people who come prepared lectures and read and get out just like united nations you see the conferences russians and others come taught by their own leaders prepare a speech and all read it the depth to other things and get out vivekananda was not a man to prepare a speech like that and then present it to the world here in a different situation therefore he had to discover america first thoroughly well and how he discovered and what he said about it i want to just share with you that because here you know man's grasp of the whole situation as buddha said you know samaditti the total view view in its entirety is what necessary whenever we do anything take a total view not just a narrow view of it and present it or view it and get out that total view we were going to took it with a short period here he says my mission in america was not the parliament of religions that was only something by the way it was only an opening an opportunity and for that we are very thankful to the members of the parliament but really our thanks are due to the great people of the united states the american nation the warm hearted hospitable great nation of america where more than anywhere else the feeling of brotherhood has been developed their kindness me to me is past all narration to take the me years uh, to tell you how i have been treated by them most kindly and most wonderfully he experienced himself in a helpless situation wherever he went the american civilization is in my opinion a very great one i find the american mind peculiarly susceptible to new ideas nothing is rejected because it is new it is examined on its own merits and stands or falls by these alone oh you may be astonished to hear that that as practical vedantis the americans are better than we are very practical in america one third of the people are christians and the rest have no religion that is they do not belong to any of the sects but amongst them are to be found the most spiritual persons america is the best field in the world to carry out my ideas the vedanta that's why he made this platform here america and through america to the whole world what is spoke in those three or four years to me the essence of all religions it's a wonderful way of what's called interpreting 
the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna. He was not a man who could easily swallow anything. I am sure many of you have read the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. How many times he used to put questions to him? In annoying him, doubting him, testing him. Many times we think, you know, for one test, which is what we said, oh, doubting Thomas. Vivekananda doubted many times. Did you know why? It is for us. I would have doubted the same way. I would have tested him the same way. For our sake, he examined, tested, verified, and proved beyond doubt what he was telling is true, absolutely true, Sri Ramakrishna's. And whatever he heard, all those revelations, seeing him, absorbing, assimilating, and he tried to present to us in his own words to the modern mind, a scientific mind. Because in this age you don't shallow traditional values. Want something more, more than what is what tradition says. Is it true? This question we put. And that we become the absorbed, assimilated, and has come to us that wonderful interpretation of Sri Ramakrishna's teachings. And most scientific way. That is the is a special contribution, and this is the place. Americans were ready for it. And they were seeking. Then, even now. Therefore, in that process, we were going to try to present what is called one religion. A religion which is harmonious, which is more practical. And that you find it in this wonderful presentation of Vivekananda. When he understood it, he what's called, he, he placed before the American public without the mention of his own teacher even. That is the great what's called uh, restraining power of Vivekananda. Many times people questioned him, his background, he said, but you worry about it. Verify the truth that I am telling before you. The idea is this. The first contribution of the harmony and unity of religions. The one religion. Religions are many. One truth. People call it by various names. One God that inspires all saints and sages. This universality, this impersonal aspect is that you find in this presentation. That is, that's why Roman Dola, when he read, read later on Vivekananda's works, he said, you know, he called it universal gospel. A French scholar, to call that universal gospel, you just imagine. That shows all these lectures that he gave in this country sum up to that wonderful concept what's called he is not a man that belonged to any particular creed or sect or religion. He has understood the meaning of all religions, all prophets, and trying to tell us something more that is needed now. And he said, you know, one third of Americans are Catholics, the rest do not, some of them do not believe in anything. Why they do not believe? I have seen many times people, I put this question, why you don't believe in God? Don't mention that name, he said, on the minister. Minister meant that. He's called, he's humanist. Why? Meaningless term it is actually. Some people believe it. Some people do not believe it. Those who believe it, there are two types, again. Those who go down to churches and synagogues and temples, bow down to all these things and do everything, those two types are these. That is religiosity. Religious piety. Static religiosity. We don't put question. My mother told me, my father told me, my priest told me that I am following it. There are two dangers in this. One is 
reverential insensibility. We are all revered. When you go to your this, do like this, bow like this, all things you do, insensible. Heart doesn't move at all. You don't feel at all. Out of habit you do it. The second danger is irreverent sensitivity. They are not reverent at all. I have seen priests who are paid for a job. They do everything. Irreverent, but very sensitive they are. If you just mention one word, they are very sensitive. Irreverent sensitivity, reverential insensibility. This is the, these are two dangers we have got when you blindly follow any religion. Much of religion is like that, I tell you. I gave once a question to the students in MIT. Please write to me, write five lines on God. Not what I say, but what the scriptures say. What you all feel. Don't quote me, don't quote any scripture. What you sincerely feel. Five lines, five sentences, that's all. Believe me, about 28, 29 papers, only two persons mentioned the word God. <laughs> None of them didn't mention it at all. And they were taught New Testament, Old Testament, Gita, Islam, we didn't teach them there. But why? They're honest people. Scientists in MIT. And one fellow who wrote, mentioned about God, I don't understand it, he wrote. There's no, nothing common in them. What they sincerely felt. Much of the religion is like that. They were all honest people. I praised them. Even though they're quite different in their own way. Religion is just like that. It has become a kind of habit to us. Vivekan wants to just break it, the whole thing. He wants to bring new meaning into that word, religion. And the word God also. Therefore, here he has brought everything together in one place. That's universality of the truth. Impersonal, universal, and spiritual, and deeply practical. That was his first contribution. And second contribution is that religion is scientific. There is another great shock to many people in this, in this country or elsewhere also. Religion is based on faith. You have to just accept what the prophets have said, don't question. Vivekananda said, no. No prophet, no saint forces me to accept it simply because he said it. Buddha once said, you know, simply because a big book tells you, don't swallow it. A great person tells you, don't swallow it. Think for yourself. That is exactly Vivekananda repeated. Religion is science, scientific. It is more scientific than science. Why? Science has no finality. No scientist tells us, this is the end of it. But in religion, the mandate is from within. You experience it. You know it. You feel it. That experience is universal, impersonal. Nothing to do with personalities and time and place. Therefore, here, religion is more scientific than science. And that is another thing also. Religion... What is religion? The science of the spirit, the science of the soul, the science of the being, the science of God, the science of consciousness, the science of life. It's actual science it is. It can be verified, demonstrated. It can be experienced. That he presented nicely. Religion is a science. Anybody, if you he said, if a man stands up and says, I and my father are one, by following his commandments, we can all experience it. What Jesus Christ said, as I followed my father's commandments, you follow mine. Sri Ramakrishna told the same thing. Whatever I have done, I have told you. Now, 
do it. That is one great thing I tell you, which is uh, a challenging point. Every one of us candidates for that. It is really scientific. It is. Follow the disciplines. Follow the commandments. All the disciplines that you find in different religions, follow them. You are sure to realize it. Not out there. God is within you. And Vivekananda beautifully presented analyzing sign in this read Jnana Yoga. The whole book is nothing but to me spiritual philosophy which is very practical. And there you find how beautifully presented God, Brahman, soul, Ratman, and the universe. It's all one unit it is. Now the modern science comes and tells you the whole planet of ours is a single cell. Mind that. Imagine a single cell. We are all there. Five billion people. With all these mountains and rivers and oceans. We are all there in that small cell. Non-separate. Mind that. Vivekananda said, the whole universe is one unit, he said. In that we are all existing. But you raise wars between people and people. That is why scientists, when they read Vivekananda's words, they are thrilled. A man is trying to explain to us in our own language. And read very well. In his complete words, particularly what he spoke in this country, read in his science. Just like any other science, you can verify it, demonstrate it, experience it, and you can feel from within yourself that it is true. What Buddha said, what Jesus said, what Muhammad declared, the spirit of Allah, of Allah is in every soul, that it is there. We can the quoting all these things, beautifully presented. That scientific attitude is what we need. America is the right place. You remember, remember 25 years back, I think, Werner von Braun, that outer space specialist, wrote a beautiful article on energy and consciousness. He, there he wrote, there are not two things, he said, there are one. Energy and consciousness interwoven. God and world, spirit and matter, they are interwoven. You can't separate it. That is exactly what Ram Krishna said. Some people say in Hinduism, the world is Maya illusion. Ram Krishna said, no, it's not illusion, it's a reality. I saw God alone in this whole world, he said. This one single unit actually. We have when this Big Bang theory when they proposed presented to us. What is that Big Bang theory? Something which was there which we do not know, unnoticed, unknown, unmanifested, came to manifestation. Whether it is spark or a bubble. In that spark and bubble, mind that we were all there. The whole universe is there. Gradually expanded. Billions of years. We were there. In our essential form. And why, why do you separate it? We can say, no, it's all one unit. Now a new theory has come. Whether I not at uh, accepted Gaia theory. They say this all not unrelated. The whole planet of ours is with this entire environment, energy and consciousness, we're all interrelated, interconnected, interdependent. 
and that exact law Vivekananda repeated 90 years back. You cannot move anything in this world without affecting the whole universe. And that is true. It is proven beyond doubt. Therefore, it is our science, he said. Don't separate it. God and what is called this world or matter and spirit, they are not two different things. And second, third, if such be the case, every individual is divine. And that word sinner is to hear quite often here. You are not all sinners, I tell you. Absolutely not. You are all divine means the divine spark is in all of us, in every soul. Only we don't know it. Hidden. We have to discover it. Really there is nothing but account of Vivekananda. is a manifestation of the divinity already existing in every human being. Man is divine. That is one word he used to repeat quite often wherever he went in this country. Don't think that you are a puny creature. You are a sinner. Sin we commit out of ignorance. Crime we commit. We are not criminals. Murder we commit. We are not murderers. And every religion tells you that God is within you. Old Testament tells you you are created in His image. New Testament tells you the kingdom of heaven is within you. Islam tells you the spirit of Allah is in every soul. And Buddha declared light of truth is in every being. We say Atman is in all of us. And Vivekananda said you are divine. Don't underestimate your own potentials. The divinity of man, divinity of woman, divinity of every soul, he proclaimed. God is not out there. God is within all of us. And to prove that, you know, he got a good example. When we fought here in this country, more than 200 years back for independence, what did we do? We threw the king out. No more you want a king. Now where, what happened to the king? The king is there in all of you. Potentially every American citizen is a president. Well, you have to prove beyond doubt that you can deliver the goods. They will do justice to the whole nation. Protect the whole country. Lead you well. You have to prove. That's all. Nothing else. Every man and woman potentially the president. We don't realize many times that is the truth. We don't bring a president king from outside. Therefore, God is in all of you. Manifest the divine. There are methods to manifest. If you have got to, what is called, the conviction is in you, I can do it. You can do it. I do not know many of you remember 1956 when I was here, John Kennedy, he came to Chicago. He wanted to be the vice president under what is called Adley Stevenson. They consider him the little kid, I tell you. Everybody said, oh, he is just a kid, no good. They put him out. They did not even make him to speak even, allow him to speak. Just his... And that fellow was hard. And he, I remember he told a friend of his, well, you know, I have to prove them. I have to prove to them that I am not a kid. Imagine he started his campaign in 1956. His few lectures I heard in Boston. Then I thought he is the presidential timber. Definitely. He got up. He proved, organized, mobilized resources. Because he had faith in him. That's what we need. Vivekananda said, have faith in yourself. You can be anything. Americans believed it actually. Many people like this presentation. Have faith in yourself. You can do it. Because you have that potential, you are strong. 
that you are divine. And that is another great thing. You are not a sinner. It is a sin to call a man a sinner, he said. Divinity is within you. Divinity of the individual. Now question comes here. How to become aware of the divinity? What is the way? That awareness of the divinity is a very important thing. There are disciplines. Every religion tells you what you should do. Follow any religion, not one way. There are so many methods. The people say there is only one way. No. Sri Ramakrishna said, Jato mat, tato pat. As many faiths, so many paths. Vivekananda said, innumerable are the ways, he said. You have to discover it, follow it, and prove it beyond doubt. That is, the disciplines also are very important. Now, many places in all religions, the unfortunate fact here is the disciplines are connected with the person. Belief in a person. We can say no. Belief in the principles, not the personalities. Why you hold to persons? As scientists, what do we do? Newton said certain things, other scientists said certain things. Einstein has said many things. Now, are we holding to the personalities or principles? Those principles are more important than personalities. Respect the personalities. It doesn't matter. But don't hold on to them. Suppose we keep picture of Einstein day and night. Oh, oh, Einstein, oh, Einstein. I will never get nothing. I will not get anything out of it. I to follow what he has said. And then I can prove something. Source in religion, I tell you honestly. This is a new thing. We become this place before the American population. Follow the principles. You will realize it. Personality is respect. That's all right. You remember in the Old New Testament, once he remarked, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, I don't know you. you. Simply saying, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, it doesn't mean he knows you. You have not done anything to prove. And Sri Krishna tells in the Vishnu Purana, I think, People call me day in and day out, oh Krishna, oh Krishna, oh Krishna. They have never done anything what I have said. They are my enemies, not my friends, he said. Just a minute. Krishna, Krishna, the Vadina. They are here, Dveshna, Moda, Dharma, Artham, Janma, Yadhyare. Where the divine power comes to help humanity, they don't do it. Simply repeat the name, that doesn't help. Vivekananda said the same thing. Follow the principles. Then you will regain something. And those principles also, he made it what's called a spiritual practice of the four yogas. When you read four yogas, you feel very happy to find he stress more on principles. Those four yogas, very scientific mind that. There also, those four yogas based upon our individual human faculties. We all have what is called the reasoning faculty, the devotional, emotional, the psychical, the practical. Thinking, feeling, willing, restraining, all these four factors in us. You perfect any factor, you have to realize the truth. Jnana Yoga represents according to him the rational the intellectual, the philosophical. It's a kind of ladder. If you follow those disciplines, you are sure to realize the truth. So also devotional. It expresses the feeling from inside. You connect your, your higher ground with your love, devotion, your feeling, expansion of heart. If you perfect it, you touch the ground. So also, the psychical, from the point of mind, consciousness. If you purify consciousness, then you reach the samadhi state, the higher ground. In the practical sense also the detached, dedicated action. That also leads to the, what's called, ultimate selflessness, egolessness state, where you, discredit, you realize your own freedom. 
All these things he presented in a scientific way. It is really unique how a man could do without touching the personalities. The moment you touch a personality, it becomes dogma, a creed, a sect. And that is the curse of the modern age. Our religions are hanging on to personalities, not to principles. See what is going on in the Middle East. Are they based on principles? Modern spiritual values? No personalities. Wherever you find this trouble, see, ignorant religious people are more fanatical and more dangerous, I tell you. More violent. In the name of God, in the name of religion. That Vivekananda saw. That how to cure this? Actually, you know, he's a, he's a prophet not for, of this age. I think ages to come. This is a, a one thing, you know, I, I still feel we have not started uh, presenting this ideal to American public or any public. We are in the process now. We are trying to find out how to place it before people. Because people are very attached to personalities. Very difficult, very difficult. Therefore, these four yogas, in an impersonal way, in a spiritual way, he presented it, so that anybody can follow it. If you are sincere and honest, read them properly. Not, not only they are the leaders, you may combine one or two even, three or four, the combination is natural, actually. Thinking, feeling, willing, restraining, they're all natural. That's why I say, those who follow the four yogas, the four wheel drive, it doesn't stop anywhere. Because there's that power, four yogas. That's why now he has designed a beautiful, what's called, emblem, swan serpent emblem. You must have seen it. All combination for yogas in one. If you cannot say one or two combine, he said, but if you combine four, heart expansion, intellect is clear, consciousness is pure, detachment is perfect. Do all these things and follow the life. You need not go anywhere. Wherever you are, whatever profession you are doing, please hold on to that. You do not get away. Be a lawyer, be a doctor, be a professor, be a businessman, but develop these things. You will get that illumination. It's a great challenge. Swamiji, he has nothing he said there which is just to praise people or to praise the situation. No. Actual fact of experience. Therefore, you know, Vivekaranda's contribution, when I study thoroughly his complete verse. What happened here in this country? It comes to my mind like this. Religion is scientific. There is only one religion, universal religion. And we are all divine. And to realize the divinity, you have to follow some techniques. And finally in one of his sessions he said, you know, about this concept of this universal religion. I shall read that line in like it. Because, you know, in his words it's more well said than my explaining to you. I would like to share with you this because his universal religion, it is for all of us, for the whole world. It should deluge the whole world with this idea, I tell you. It takes time. It started rolling. People are not yet ready because still our old tendencies are there. We are following our old pattern, beliefs and faith and convictions. That you have to shake it off. Have respect to all these prophets. Have reverence for them. But don't close your eyes. Because he said once, you know, I bow down to the prophets of the past, prophets of the present and prophets yet to come. Have you ever heard these things from any prophet, any priest or any saint? 
Just imagine. Prophets yet to come. Science is not a closed book. We, pro- we respect all the scientists of the past, scientists of the present, and scientists yet to come. And that was his concept of universal religion. I will just read this. If there is ever to be a universal religion, it must be one which will have no location in place or time, which will be infinite like the God it will preach, and whose sun will shine upon the followers of Krishna and of Christ, and saints and sinners alike, which will not be Brahminical or Buddhistic, Christian or Mohammedan, but the sum total of all these and still have infinite space for development which in its Catholicity will embrace in its infinite arms and find a place for every human being from the lowest groveling savage not far removed from the brute to the highest man towering by the virtues of his head and heart almost above humanity making society stand in awe and of him and doubt his human nature. It will be a religion which will have no place for persecution or intolerance in its polity, which will recognize divinity in every man and woman, and whose scope, whose force will be centered in aiding humanity to realize its own true nature, divine nature. That was Vivekananda's contribution, special contribution to the whole world. That was his religion. And that he was speaking from his own illumination point of view. Experience, sight, a brilliant mind came to see Ramakrishna and Ramakrishna understood him. From the very beginning, he used to, Sri Ramakrishna used to say, he is a real fellow, real man, he said. And people thought, you know, he was praising him because he liked him very much. No, he proved beyond doubt that he was a chosen man. And he made him the leader, Sri Ramakrishna made him the leader of all the, the whole group. He said, you lead them, you all follow them, follow him. This impersonal universal religion, even to us in India it is new. Even some of our own, well, monks <coughs> doubted its validity. I remember somebody complained to Holy Mother, Mother, this boy comes from West Coast, West and, and turn preaching all these things to us. We never had these things from Sri Ramakrishna. What is all about? And Mother said firmly, if anybody has understood Sri Ramakrishna, Narayana has understood that. Follow him, literally. None of you know what Sri Ramakrishna said to him, what he meant. He is the only man. As you know, only two persons knew him well. Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother. He was not understood by many. It's very difficult. Such broad, such what is called, you know, universal heart, it's very difficult to swallow it in the field of religion. And that Vivekananda came here. In the right place, he put that idea. Now, that idea must penetrate and pierce the hearts of our friends here, enter into their very bosom and then hold it up. Yeah, it takes time. It's not easy because we are still holding on to our old traditional values. They are good. We are not nothing, nothing wrong with them. But we move over to go on, march on. Traditions living behind with respect, with reverence. To march on to a scientific religion because the world is in need of this religion now. Because religion, religion is a the problem nowadays is religion actually. 
See the world situation. Wherever there is a conflict and troubles, wars, religious people are excited. They come up because fanaticism. If they are understood work as religion, they will never go for it. This religion must be taught in every school, every college, in every nation, and then you will find a change. It will come. It is bound to come. Because this is the only answer. As Tanvi said, you know, this long, long back, if you are to survive in this age, this is the only answer. This, I just mentioned about Tanvi's remark. This Catholic minded Indian religious spirit is a way of salvation for human beings of all religions in an age in which we have learned to live as a single family if we are not to destroy ourselves. Yes, this century began with the Western beginning. It will have an Eastern ending, he said. If we have to survive in this nuclear age, there is only one way. Ramakrishna's unit and harmony of religions. That unit and harmony of religions has been brought to us by Swamiji, not as a dogma, not as a creed, not based on traditions, but based on scientific evaluation. May you all be inspired by this wonderful teaching of Swami Vivekananda. Gain something in this very life, here and now, and enjoy the peace and share that peace with others. Let's make prayer.